2023 was a crazy year for AI. When I connect to LinkedIn, there's always a new stuff to see about AI. A new way to do some image rendering with AI. A new prompt library from ChatGPT that is supposed to save you a lot of time. But finally, I don't know if you'd like me, but we don't have time to test all this stuff. We don't even know what is important, what is the software to start with and so on. So if you are in this case, don't panic. It's not too late to start with AI in 2024. In this video, I will give you an introduction how to use AI practically as an IRC professional. I will tell you why AI is important, why you should care about it, how to use it practically in your daily workflow, what tool you can use in 2024 without losing your time testing a lot of stuff. I know it is hard for AOC professionals to find the time uh, to be aware of the new software on the market. In AI, in AOC, there is so many new stuff all the day and it's difficult to be aware of it. So I make my own research and I share to you my database of tools, the best tool I found, so it's not so much. I don't want to overflow you with too much information, but just with the basic tools, the ones that are more essential to know and to be aware of because they could uh, save you a lot of time. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a selection of this tool. So you could get all the tools in the description. And in this video, I will detail some uh, that sounds to me the more interesting. If you want to support my work and learn more about AI in IOC, please subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumb up. So now we can start. Let's start our AI in IOC journey. AI is going to change everything in the coming years. It is a revolution which is as important as electricity. So you should not ignore it because anyway, you will, uh, you will need to adapt to this new condition where part of the work are done by machine, by AI, and part of the work are done by human. Contrary to other technical change that we experience in AOS industry, like a CAO, like BIM, AI is more important. Why? Because it's going to change in, in a more fun, fundamental way, the way of working. So the sooner you adapt to it, the sooner you discover how to use the tool uh, to be more efficient, the better you will be adapted to this new condition of work. We can also see AI as a huge opportunity for AOC industry to change, to build better, to build faster, to have a higher margin, a higher productivity, and to be carbon free. So what are the different types of AI and specifically generative AI? So we can classify generative AI depending on what it generates. So basically, if an AI generates text, it's a text generative AI. And the more famous AI is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is what is called technically a LLM, Large Language Model, but it could be also uh, described as a text generative AI. Why? Because as an input, generally, we use text and as an input, generally, we have text. After, it's more complicated like, uh, than that because ChatGPT can accept more uh, type of input and more type of output uh, when it is connected with DALI, for example. But to be short, it's uh, ChatGPT is a text generative AI. After, there are other AI like Midjourney, like uh, Stable Diffusion, uh, that are image generative AI. So technically, this AI could be uh, described as a model diffuser AI. So it's another type of training, another type of AI. But basically, it's not that different because they are used uh, to be trained on many images, whereas ChatGPT is trained on many texts. Uh, but at the end, we could use a text to generate an image or an image to generate an image. So you see, with this simple rule of classification, we can better understand why what people are, are talking when they say we are using AI. We are using AI, but which AI? So first, a generative AI. Second, what does it take as an input? What does it take as an output? What are the different use cases of AI in IOC right now in 2024? So to answer this question, we are going to split the, the, the scope of AI software by the stage of the project in which they can be used. So in a construction project, 
Classically, we have different stages from feasibility to sketches, early design, project, then uh, call for, for tender to choose a construction company, a contractor, and then uh, construction itself, and then the delivery of the project and the maintenance, the usage of the project by the final user. So about ChatGPT, I will not lose too much time to explain what it is because everybody knows it. I think most of you have probably tested it. But as it is the more performant uh, chatbot uh, with AI on the market, of course, it's necessary to test and to use it. You have two options, either the paid version, either the free version. And uh, if you want to have uh, more idea how to use it as an architect, uh, I will release a course in the next week. So stay tuned and uh, sign up to, uh, to my uh, database of AI uh, tool for ASC because uh, thanks to your email, I could send you a notification when I release it. And that's it for it. So ChatGPT is the first, uh, the more famous AI uh, generator on the market. Adobe Firefly is an AI generator integrated in uh, Adobe Suite, so in Adobe Photoshop, for example. And it allows you to, uh, to generate some image inside an image. So it's what we call in-painting. It means that you select a zone in the image, and inside this zone, you could have a prompt to fill this zone. So it, it, could, very, it could be very handy, for example, if you, you want to remove the background around uh, a personage. Uh, a people and uh, and you want to fill it with what you imagine and this could be useful in architecture for example when you do a perspective and so on so uh, i suppose that you already use photoshop uh, often uh, so probably you already tested the uh, adobe firefly but if you didn't test it uh, i suggest you to to give it a try DALI is an image generator from OpenAI. So OpenAI is the same firm as uh, who, who made the ChatGPT. And the advantage of DALI is that it's available uh, in uh, ChatGPT. So it means that ChatGPT could generate a prompt uh, which is adapted to, uh, to da DALI 3. Uh, da yes, DALI 3 is the last version of this image generation. So it could be comparable to Midjourney. I think it's still a, a little bit behind uh, Midjourney, especially for photorealism. But it's more, it is probably a bit uh, more convenient uh, to make an image because it is integrated to ChatGPT. And also, as uh, it is the same subscription as ChatGPT, if you already have a subscription in uh, ChatGPT, uh, you, could, uh, you could already uh, have the benefit of DALI. Uh, it is worth to mention also that uh, DALI 3 is available in uh, Bing, uh, Bing uh, Image Generate. Uh, I tested it a, a few times in this uh, other place. Uh, it's not as convenient, but it's a possibility to use it for free. Fabry is a tool that I discovered recently, and I, I, I think it's, very, uh, it's a very interesting idea. Uh, basically, it's an infinite board, a bit like uh, Figma, if you know the Figma, and uh, where you can combine a different, uh, different um, layout uh, with some table, with some uh, images, uh, idea, uh, image of uh, ideas, and so on. And you have some AI to automate uh, the, the design uh, brainstorming. Uh, so you can generate some uh, mind, map, uh, mind map automatically and, uh, and link this mind map uh, to, uh, to some ideas that could be extracted automatically from the web. It's what I understand from uh, the behavior of uh, Fabry. So I think it's uh, worth to test and uh, I didn't test it in a real uh, use case of, uh, of designing a project. But, uh, but I think it's a very uh, interesting uh, idea using AI, but also collaboration. Fin3D is one of the AI generative tools that I discovered uh, targeting uh, mostly the architect. Uh, so you see that here, uh, it's really impressive, uh, impressing what you can do uh, automatically with AI by defining some constraints, some, uh, some parameters. And uh, so here it says, uh, it, calcul it calculates, I think, the, the, the light illumination and uh, the plot uh, uh, describe all, all the variant. So I think with this type of tool, uh, 
uh, we could really uh, study a lot of possibilities, a lot of variants, and uh, finally find the best one. So Finch3D is not the only one on this market, and I suggest you, you test th this one, but also other one like layout and, uh, and others that I have in the database that I, uh, I put in the description. But uh, this one has a good presentation uh, and I understood uh, really well uh, how it, uh, it works. So I think it's a great tool. So I discovered Ekta recently as well. It's a Swedish, uh, Swedish uh, app. And uh, I think it's targeted uh, towards uh, architects or urban planners. And, uh, and here you, you clearly see uh, the concept. Basically, you, you select a site, then you select a typology of building, and it generates uh, many variations of possible usage of this site with this typology, and then it does some analysis of it. So I think it's the same idea. The idea is that you could generate many, uh, many um, possible project, uh, so, but it's just uh, by comparison with Finch 3D, it's more uh, zoom out. Uh, it's more at the level of a district, for example, of uh, a full uh, plot. And uh, this could be really handy to, um, to go faster first, but to uh, discover more possibilities of typologies and to understand uh, ahead of time what is the consequence of our design choices. InspectMine is a tool uh, more for architect or constructor, but to uh, to make some uh, site supervision. Uh, so when when you go to the site, generally uh, you you don't have time to really take uh, good notes, and afterward you need to take time to make the report. And with InspectMine. Uh, you can simply, uh, with your phone, uh, I suppose, uh, talk to, to your phone and, uh, and say what's, uh, what you noticed, wh what is uh, being done wrong or, or other, uh, other not. And you could also take photo and the AI is going to analyze all that stuff so, so to do some, uh, some reports. So basically you, you record after there is an AI generated report, after you can review the report before to send and after you send the report. So the idea is that at the end of the day, when you finish your inspection uh, to the site, uh, construction site, then you don't have any, uh, any more work and the AI is doing the hard job and the boring job of just formatting the report. So TestFit is a real estate feasibility platform. So it allows you to, uh, to choose uh, your plot and after, uh, once you're, you're, you choose uh, where to build, uh, to, to uh, understand what is possible to build and how it could fit with uh, your program. How you, uh, for example, if you want to, uh, to have, uh, I don't know, uh, 50 uh, apartments, is it possible to build uh, 50 apartments in this plot? And if so, uh, how many uh, parking uh, you could have and so on, this type of question. Upcode's uh, promise is to be able to cherch in uh, all the construction code and uh, to check uh, the building uh, documentation, to build the building uh, documentation uh, thanks to chunk of, uh, of the code and, uh, and also to, to manage the project and uh, to, 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 get, uh, to make a relation between, uh, between uh, your, your drawings and, uh, and the code. But of course, uh, like other uh, construction code project, uh, it is limited by geography scope. Uh, so here it's only USA and uh, perhaps it will expand in the future. So Schema is a tool, uh, generative uh, design tool uh, that is connected uh, to the BIM, especially to Revit. And that uh, pretend so to, uh, to, with Schema, you could go faster, but you could go, you could also uh, repeat what you, you've already done in the past. It's what I understand from their description. And, uh, and here it's interesting because uh, in uh, most of uh, this tool, by the way, uh, there is a combination between the design itself and the, the analysis. So here, for example, as we design, we have a feedback uh, from uh, the sustainability uh, performance of our building, which is uh, quite uh, important if we want to change things in early stage. And uh, we all know that the changing thing uh, in early stage is uh, much better because it's uh, less costly. And, uh, and that's it. I think uh, it's uh, yet another uh, generative tool that uh, is worth exploring. Now we are going to talk about Lookix. So Lookix is a platform, a rendering platform using AI for architects. So it's made by a Chinese uh, architecture company. 
and uh, it's really a great platform so I made a full video about it you could uh, click on it if you are interested uh, uh, at the top of the screen uh, and uh, what uh, how it works basically you have a base image which uh, is what define your geometry so it could be a sketch it could be a 3d but a very light 3d you don't need to uh, design your full building and also a reference image. So this image gives the style, uh, gives maybe the materials that we you want to use. And also you have some prompt. Uh, you could even have some negative prompt. You could uh, you, you have a lot of tools that allow to be very precise. Uh, you could do some in painting. If you are not satisfied by the material of this surface, you could change it and so on. And also uh, the advantage is that is, uh, it is integrated in at least two design tools. So SketchUp and Rhino. Uh, it means that in a matter of uh, minutes, you could see the result of your design. You don't need to wait for a full uh, traditional rendering. And by comparison with Stable Diffusion Control Net, it's much more simple. It's less technical. You don't require uh, so much uh, uh, memory on your local computer if you use your local computer. Also, you have some uh, pre-trained uh, model dedicated to architecture rendering. Spatio is another, uh, another tool where you can design uh, online uh, collaboratively using generative AI, but also what they call freeform editing. It means uh, I suppose that you can drag uh, the volume very easily and you don't have to bother if it, uh, it works or it don't work. Uh, also, uh, a good point about uh, Specio is that you have a real-time analysis. So when you do uh, a change like the one which is displayed here, you already have the update of the consequence on uh, simulation. Uh, if it is, uh, uh, if you you are interested about uh, day lighting or about uh, carbon emission, this kind of stuff. Uh, also, I think there is some intelligent. Uh, structuration of the design so you don't need to fight uh, to have a good uh, Revit family uh, but uh, it's already structured the good way which seems uh, uh, a good uh, <laughs> good practice uh, and after you could import uh, finally the design in uh, in Rhino or in um, in uh, Revit and so on so I think there is a development of this kind of tool uh, that you can use as a as a start uh, to design quickly some volume, to use AI, generative AI, to have uh, many uh, variants of the project. And then you import it to your traditional uh, beam modeling tool or design tool. Uh, maybe it will not be forever that we will do that, but I think at the moment of the development of a project, there is some complexities that current tool uh, cannot, uh, cannot go uh, to this level. So you, we need at the moment to re-import in design tool. But perhaps in the coming year, uh, the, the online tool will be uh, powerful enough to do the full development of the project. So it was really hard to select the tools that I show in this video because there is so many tools and some are similar, some are different, but uh, it's also, it takes time to test them and so on. So probably I will do some more detailed video on the tools that I, I am more interested in and also the one that I can get access to because it's not always easy to get uh, free access to the tool to be able to test. Uh, so see you in the next video for that. But meanwhile, if you want to, to know uh, which tool I found to prepare this video, I prepared a, a database in Notion with the list of tools that I think are essential to know as an architect, as an AOC professional. So this list is totally for free. I give it to you. You, you have the link in the description. If you are still here at the end of the video, I suppose that you are interested about AI in IOC. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I will release more videos about the topic. So see you in the next video. Bye bye.